Mission Control Operations actually use the same flight control team from the same location at Starbase, which you can see on your screen now. But as we develop a vehicle like Starship, we want as many experts watching over its various systems as we can. And that's what we use the Mission Control Room here in Hawthorne for during Starship flight tests like today's. The folks in Mission Control, which you see now on your screen, are the responsible engineers for Starship's various systems. And having the support gives the flight teams in Starbase immediate access to our engineers' knowledge, which is really, really important when we're making informed decisions very quickly in a test program like this. This setup has been great for Starship flight tests so far, as we've handled things like propellant temperature differences, as well as day of launch winds that can affect the loads placed on Starship structures during launch, and particularly during the descent of the super heavy booster back to Earth. So having all of these responsible engineers ready to support is crucial during Starship testing, where we place hardware in flight conditions quickly to iterate and make the best and most reliable rocket that we can. So it's definitely a full house, a growing full house here in Hawthorne for our ninth flight of Starship today. T plus 40 seconds, it's one hell of a sight from here. We see it arcing right over top of us. We see 33 out of... See those engines powering down? Booster engine cutoff. Ship ignition. Stage separation. Incredible flip by Super Heavy Booster, and you can see those six engines, those three engines on the ship ignited. Six healthy Raptors <laughs> running on ship on its way to space. Peak that engine view. Booster doing the boost back. Chris, how's it looking over there at Hawthorne, man? It is looking Raptor awesome. Chamber pressure is nominal. It is looking absolutely incredible here in Hawthorne. As we said, six healthy engines on ship. We've got 13 out of 13 engines on the booster. Now down to those three, which is what we expect in the final moments of the boost back burn. Now, as a reminder, we are not recovering the super heavy booster today. We are instead going to do booster some... Booster shut down. And there we had a good shutdown of the boost back burn. Next up will be the jettison of that hot stage ring. avionics power and telemetry nominal. Great call out there that everything looking nominal aboard the super heavy vehicle, which is returning to Earth. And we're going to be doing some experiments with it, including a higher angle of attack re-entry, uh, as well as some engine tests as it gets closer to the Gulf. We are, again, because of these tests not recovering it, we are sending it to the Gulf on purpose to do those tests. But again, you see the booster on the left-hand side of your screen. You see ship with six healthy engines continuing its ascent to its planned suborbital trajectory. Uh, everything going very well so far for Starship's ninth flight. Now uh, four minutes, 15 seconds in. It may have ended with that landing burn. Does look like we lost telemetry from the booster once we started into that landing burn. Did you see a confirmation that the booster did demise? So the booster's flight ending before it was able to get through landing burn, but again, we are not bringing that back. We we're expecting it to make a hard splash down in the Gulf. We were getting live data back the entire time through that high angle of attack flight. So that was something that was really vital for us to get during this reuse. First free flight of booster in the books. All right, ship has about two minutes left. As we will see in a few minutes, the primary data and pay uh, the primary payload for today is the data 
And today, just like with Starship's previous test flights, that data is coming to us courtesy of our Starlink network. In fact, it is from Starlink that you are seeing these wonderful views of ship in space right now. So, um, and I can't wait to see Star, uh, Starlink really provide those epic views and that data transmission during reentry, which is very, very critical to getting that data during reentry. So, Dan and Jesse, it's been an exciting day so far. There's more to come uh, as we get ready for Starship's first ever payload deploy. What can we expect next year in the next few minutes? We are expecting the payload door to open in a little over a minute from now. And then once that payload door is open, about a couple minutes later is when we will start start dispensing those yeah, Starlink similars. What a, a great view! Right view. at the bottom <laughs> of the stack, so should be should be able to see them kind of firing out from right there. So really cool. And eventually, these these are going to carry dozens of the next generation of Starlink satellite into space, and those are going to enable some truly insane things in terms of speeds from space uh, and what we're able to what we're able to do it starlink's been really great for starship obviously uh getting live video back is really cool but just the amount of high speed telemetry everything we're able to get back is insane and for a development program that's kind of everything <laughs> uh, we're in excess of 100 130 or 160 my numbers are fuzzy right now just like my brain is uh, but <laughs> well in excess of 100 megabits per second of downlink and a lot of that gets eaten up by video we've got dozens of cameras across starship we added several more um, for this flight you saw a couple of those as we have essentially 360 degrees Oop. open the pod bay door hal Thank all you. right so we are 42 minutes and change into today's flight test you're seeing the light show start <laughs> as Starship is getting closer to its reentry. If you're just tuning in, we were able to successfully make it to orbit, run into a couple of issues as we've coasted to our entry point over the Indian Ocean. At this point, we had lost attitude control of the ship and entered into a spin. The team made the call to do what's called passivate the vehicles, so we're essentially venting all of the remaining propellant overboard and it's gonna make an uncontrolled re-entry. Important to note, this is a contingency that is planned for, and we clear the zones in the Indian Ocean where these entries could take place. Um, so we're not gonna come down exactly where we would have had nothing happened, uh, but we do clear a tremendous amount of uh, space out in the Indian Ocean um, in the event that we run into this. You always, we, we understand that there are always risks, essentially with these flight tests, with the hardware, uh, but we don't really accept any compromise when it comes to protecting people.